Hello everyone. Uh, this is Kulsum Farhat Khan, an intern of Amicus Cray, and currently pursuing BCom LLB course from Institute of Law, Nirmal University. So today I will be talking about law of encounter killings in India. As we know that there has been an increase in the number of extrajudicial killings in India, which is very atrocious. The major form is the encounters by police. a military and other security forces basically challenging the rule of law on which this country is based upon extrajudicial killings manifest outlawed force through which the person is executed illegally it is definitely a gross human rights violation and the reflection of the apathetic criminal justice system in our country we are very much aware of the recent infamous encounters of vikas dubey which can be seen in the left picture and the encounters of the four accused in the hyderabad gang rape case in 2019 which has put an intense indignation over the functioning of police and the legitimacy of the use of force also it puts a lack of faith in the present criminal justice system among the citizens of the country moving ahead so there are certain circumstances in which the police is justified in executing extrajudicial killings and which are very much legal the first one is um, under section 96 of the indian penal code if the death is caused in the exercise of the right of private defense by a person then it's not it will not amount to an offense as far as the extrajudicial killing is concerned secondly if the death is caused in the section 100 of ipc or exception section 3 of section 300 of ipc then also it is an exception further if it is uh, in such a situation that it is required to arrest the person accused of an offence which is punishable with death or imprisonment of life this being given under the provision of section 46 of criminal procedure code um it basically authorizes the police to use force extending up to the causing of death so this extending up to the causing of death again rules out the offence any being committed by the police officer if it is done under the garb of such circumstances as is provided in the section 46 of crpc moving ahead um so as we started with the very discussion that there has been an increase um in the uh there has been an increase in the encounter killings of police recently and it is a cause of concern uh any rti inquiry revealed that the national human rights commission of india registered a total of 100 1782 fake encounter cases between the years 2000 and 2017 also in 1997 the national human rights commission laid down certain guidelines in respect of encounter killings the very first being that if an n FIR that is the first information report should be registered in case of an encounter there has to be conduct of an an immediate investigation on receiving the information of the encounter also the dependents of the deceased need to be given compensation and further the case of encounter is needed to be referred to other fair investigation agencies in case of policemen belong to the same police station in 2010 these guidelines were extended by including a magisterial inquiry under section 176 crpc in case of death within 3 months and mandatory reporting of all encounter deaths to the commission within 48 hours of happening coming uh, to why uh, is encounter killings really disturbing so the very first reason is that uh, they, it leads to gross violation of indian constitution and principles provided therein 
The very first thing is the violation of Article 21 of the Constitution of India of the person who is deprived of his life by encounter killings at the hands of police. Secondly, um, the person, the accused, is entitled to having a fair investigation and trial, even if he has committed a heinous crime. By committing extrajudicial killings, the right to equality before law, a fair trial, is deprived to that person who has been shot under um, through an extrajudicial killing. Also, an accused person has a fundamental right to have an advocate of his choice for defense under Article 22, which is also a statutory right. But what happens is in fake encounters, the police assume the role of judiciary without giving a proper chance to the accused to be heard at an appropriate judicial forum. So basically, it is the responsibility of the police to follow the constitutional principles and uphold the right to life of every individual, whether an innocent, law-abiding citizen or a dreaded criminal. Let's look upon what the Supreme Court has observed in various instances, uh, in various cases regarding the extrajudicial killings. The very first uh, is, is the case of R.S. Sodhi versus State of Uttar Pradesh in 1992. Uh, the Central Bureau of Investigation was, was asked in credibility and independence to the process. Uh, in the case of Prakash Kadam in 2011, the Supreme Court said that when an extrajudicial execution is proved against policemen in a trial, they must be given the death sentence. Even in 2012, Supreme Court in Om Prakash held that extrajudicial killings are not legal under our criminal justice administration system. Lastly, in 2014, in the case of PUCL versus State of Maharashtra, the court has reiterated that killings in the encounters by police affect the credibility of the rule of law and the administration of the criminal justice system. Uh, here, I would like to conclude by uh, stating the following points of observations that I have gathered from various articles, what need to be done, what needs to be done in um, this scenario where extrajudicial killings are increasing and the rule of law is ignored. The judicial decision in Vineet Narayan concerning an anti-corruption case sets a strong precedent and uh, regarding how the apex court led on to power to monitor investigations, appoint amicus curiae, and continuously hold investigative agencies accountable. The same approach can be followed in extrajudicial killings too. The guidelines set forth by NHRC need to be followed. And lastly, the media should avoid labeling extrajudicial killings as heroic acts as it shakes the faith of people in our criminal justice system. This is all. Um, and thank you very much for listening.